bear with a minute. I'm going to turn my volume down. There you go. Right. OK. Um, yeah. Good evening, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, you can't see me. I am here. Um, I'm just going to sort the chat out because it's. Oh, it's done that thing again. It's kind of all squished and looks weird. I kind of don't want it like that. So just bear with me. I'm just going to make the chat a bit smaller. There you go. That's better, isn't it? Yeah. Now it's going to change when I switch to the other camera. That's the problem. Uh, because I've got two cameras set up uh, tonight. Uh, you can see the other one up there. And if I press this button, it does that. And then the text all gets squished again. So let me just paste that in as a new source and get rid of the old one. Right. OK. So this is an impromptu stream, as you can probably tell by the fact that <laughs> I'm having to do all of this on the fly. So, yeah, thank you very much for joining me this evening. Let's go back to this one. Um, and it's a bit dark because I've had to move the lighting around for this camera. So that means uh, that means I just need to change the brightness on this camera because it's super dark. So let's just up this brightness a bit. There we go. That's better. Right. So my trove chest arrived this week um, and I thought, I'll tell you what, if I have time after doing my demoing today, Let's put the trove chest together. So this is not a planned video other than yesterday I thought I'd do this. Um, and we're basically going to put it together. So this isn't going to be a short video. It's not going to be a time lapse video. This is literally live as I open this up and we put it together. So if you are in the chat and you have put one of these together, I may be looking for your help um, because I might get stuck. I don't, I don't quite know. Oh. Have I broken it? <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's a big box. And yeah, there we go. But yeah, basically, have I limbered up? I haven't limbered up. Uh, and Scott is saying, I haven't opened it. I hope it's physically okay. There were some issues with some of them that got delivered, uh, which Cheap Theory Games are being obviously very good about, and they're doing replacements. Um, but yes, no, I haven't. Um, Dan's saying it, it comes together. Yes. So, yeah, I know I don't need to assemble it, but okay, so <laughs> how am I going to get this out? I don't know. What's the best way of getting this out? Is it to turn it upside down? I think I got a little spider. Hello. Where did you come from? Okay, well, we've got to save this little spider. There you go. I don't know where he went. Shannon's here. Hi, Shannon. Thank you for joining in. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it turn it upside down like so and then there we go right so the reason I haven't got my uh, my other camera on is my other camera is normally see where I'm pointing my other camera is there pointing right at me uh, and of course, right now, all that would show is the box because the box is, it is huge. Uh, most of you watching this probably know what a trove chest is. If you don't know what a trove chest is, uh, it is a storage system for Too Many Bones. Too Many Bones is a game from Chip Theory Games, uh, which comes with, I mean, yeah, there's lots and lots of boxes with the game. Uh, there's lots of expansions for the game and it all fits in multiple boxes just about and what they've done is they've released this thing called the trove chest uh, and this will fit in everything all of the components from all of the games so far and there's room for more uh, and it it's it's made to fit in a calax okay so yeah it fits in a calax i have two calaxes in here uh, and it is going to fit in one of these calaxes but this is heavy right this uh, i mean there's nothing in it. It's not, it's not got any game in it whatsoever. And it is really heavy. Now, how do you get, how do you, oh, I've turned it upside down, haven't I? That's why. Yeah. So I need to turn it. <laughs> this is so heavy. What's it made out of? Lead? Oh, it's made out of lead. Yeah. I mean, it's gorgeous. Here we go. Right. There you go. Um, so yeah, basically, yeah. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to switch to the other camera, which is this button here. And that's really dark as well. 
and you can kind of see a little bit of behind the scenes studio stuff. I should have moved one of the lights round. That's what I should have done. Bear with a minute, I'm going to move one of the lights round. Talk amongst yourselves. Uh, this is this. Uh, no, I'll, I'll talk. I'll talk in a minute when I get back. How's that? Is that better? Um, yeah, so monkeys here. Right, so yeah, so the idea of this video is basically, yeah, just, just have a chat. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves uh, while the video is going out because, yeah, we're going to be here for a while. Um, but yeah, so this opens up here. <laughs> Poor monkey. Yeah, there you go, there's monkey. Uh, so this opens up uh, and then everything goes in here. And then where's that bit that I threw away? Um, so this is the magnetic piece and then these go on here and then these pull out and these are full of stuff which you can't see from this camera angle um, but yeah so these pull out here like this and then that's not coming out there it is that's coming out yeah so there you go um, and I believe from things I've read and been told That can actually be kept there. Pull the second drawer down all the way out. Uh, okay. Danny's telling me. Second drawer down. That's this one. Pull this all the way out. Okay. Right. I've done that. What am I, what am I missing? Aha. This is this. This is the this is the black envelope that I've heard people talking about. So I'm not going to open that. Maybe I'll open that right at the end of the video because I don't want to give any spoilers away. Shannon, if you're still in the chat, or Dan, that was a cat. Um, so I think it got caught a little bit at the back, a little bit bent. But yeah, let me know. Don't show what you find. Okay, so I'll open that off camera. But yeah, I think by me pulling it out and then putting it back in, I kind of bent this a little bit. So I'll I'll have a look at that later on. Okay. Um, anyway, yeah, so as I say, what this video is, we're going to be here a while. I'm basically going to be putting all of this stuff from all of this game stuff uh, in, in there. I just sort this camera. I might try a different camera angle, actually. If I move this up and then angle it down. How's that? That's probably better, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. Right, it's a secret. Okay, I won't, I won't show that then. Um, yeah, so I, I've got a, I've got a can of cider. Other drinks are available. And yeah, this is just me um, putting it together. Off we go then. How should we start? I mean, are there are there any instructions? If there's no instructions, where's the rule book, Shannon? <laughs> if there's no instructions, I might struggle. Ooh. Don't eat that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's get rid of the silica gel. And the thing is, I know I've already got a video on my channel of uh, John Madani putting together his trove chest. Um, but, you know, I watched a little bit of it. Instructions sort of in the top drawer with the stickers. Right. Okay. Let me go for. Let me go for these. This colour's terrible on this camera. The, so the camera that you're seeing right now, this is 80 quid off eBay and it's 10 years old. This is my tertiary camera. So yeah, it's not very good quality. Um, chip sticker definitions. This sticker is provided as an option to protect your trove chest from the impact of the magnet. During testing, the trove chest was not damaged, but prolonged use of the magnet may leave dents or markings. Oh, okay. Ah, right. Okay, so you can put you can put this sticker onto here, which is somewhere 
for this to attach to. Okay, that's good that they've tested it, but they've said, look, it might. So this sticker, where's this? Oh, here we go. Right. This is, this is the destruction. Uh, yes, there is a video that Chip Theory Games put out telling you exactly how it all goes together, but I can't really watch that while doing my own. That would be, uh, that would be, that would be a bit odd. <laughs> Let me just see if I can do anything with this color because it seems very saturated. Let's reset the colors. There you go. Uh, and let's, let's try it again. Okay. So the color was all a bit funny. There you go. That's better, isn't it? Yeah, much better. Okay. Um, but yeah, feel free to basically chat amongst yourselves. Tell us what kind of day you've had. Um, tell us what games you've been playing or what games you're planning to play. And just basically, yeah, chat amongst yourselves while I put everything together. So number one, reference sheets. And should we just go through them in order? I think let's go through them in order. Right. So number one, this one. This is going to be, I'm just looking at the edge here, this, this sticker on the edge doesn't quite go up to the edge. It's got a bit of, yeah, I don't know if that's deliberate or not. I'm not sure. Anyway, reference sheets and rule book go in here. Right. So, uh, Ready Steady Player has got an eight hour one for putting it together. Well, I'll tell you what, oh, my audio is a bit clicky at times. Um, I'll tell you what I can do is I can listen back to myself, see what it's like. Oh, my audio is a bit clicky at times. Um, I'll tell you what I can do is I can listen back to myself. Sounds okay to me. Yeah, let me know if, uh, if it's a problem for anybody else. But yeah, if this is at eight hours, I, I, am, I am not going to be here for eight hours. I'm probably going to be here for about an hour and a quarter max. So if that isn't enough, then um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know later. But I have a full day ahead of me tomorrow, more demoing and more videos. So I certainly don't have time for an eight hour stream. <laughs> okay, so we have Splice and Dice references. We have Stanza and we have Duster. So they're going in there. And where are the rule books? I don't think my rule books are in there or undertow. Jonathan's here. Hi, Jonathan. And Chris is saying no problems with the volume. Right, so Splice and Dice rulebook is going in there. Is the side view okay? I think the side view is okay. The other view is the top-down view. Is that one. Which one would you prefer? Side view, uh, top-down view, which is that one, or side view, which is that one? Yeah, let me know which you prefer. This one, I think. Uh, Brett says, Chris and I were discussing which games you should take away for our week away in a log cabin next month. This, definitely. Just, just take this with you. Uh, that'll be fine. <laughs> but no, there you go. Question for the chat. Which game should you take away for a week away in a log cabin next month? Side view is the best. New and improved side view. Right, there we go. Dangerous Dart. Does this count as a reference sheet? Yes, it does. So Undertow Rulebook. So this is version 1.0 of the Undertow Rulebook, uh, which uh, I, I had big problems learning from. Uh, I know there's a newer version that is better, but yeah, 1.0 I really struggled with. Um, so that's that. That's Undertow. I'm just going to have yeah. to take these boxes out and leave them over there. Right. Okay. Oh, hang on. It's, uh, Close down that. I'm just going to close it because I'm getting pings on Messenger from other things that I'm working on. I'm doing an unboxing tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock and the game hasn't arrived yet. So I'm trying to find out where it is. Uh, and they've just said it, they're hoping it'll be here before 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. But my unboxing is 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. So, <laughs> Right. So this is version 2.1 of the Too Many Bones rulebook. So I'm hoping this one uh, is going to help me help me play but the problem with the problem with too many bones is not the core rules once you get the hang of the core rules then it's okay my problem comes and i've said this i've said this a number of times online is when you actually come to play the character not that one um and the last one i tried to play was lab rats i can't decipher this uh, uh i i read this and read this and i i still get completely confused um yeah 
anyway, rule book, reference sheets. I think that might be it for that. And then we have the rest of the reference sheet. If you don't know what this game is, it's a cooperative dice building RPG. Um, I mean, it says RPG. I don't think it is really an RPG. A lot of people use RPG in loose terms. Like, I don't think the computer RPGs are really RPGs. Um, it's an RPG. I, I think this is more of a board game. You have a character, but you're not role playing. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, here's all of the reference sheets for all of the characters. Um, the characters all play very asymmetrically, but basically, cooperative game, one to four players. Uh, you each take a character. We'll look at the character boards in a minute. And you're trying to get from A to B and defeat the tyrant. Uh, and it's a series of combat encounters is what you have along the way. And you get equipment and things like that. But I would have said it's not really a role-playing game, personally. In the, in the same way that I say Gloomhaven is not a role-playing game. Uh, you're not, you know, it's a board game. You're not really role-playing a character as such. Right, is that it for draw number one? Draw number one, reference sheets and rule books. Draw number two. Right, this is a big one. We're going to be here a while. This is gearlock trays so i believe i'm gonna have to move that back aren't i yeah move that back it's an rpg in the sense that legend of zelda is an rpg exactly uh although in legends of zelda don't you have i mean i've not played any of the zelda games which is probably gonna lose me a lot of followers but in those games although again i don't think they're rpgs you do have parts where you do uh, narrative uh, and it and you talk to people and you have choices to select. So that's a bit sort of like an RPG. So yeah, so these, these were a modified version of something that was available online as a 3D print thing. Um, and they're really, really good. So basically Chip Theory Games, I believe, said, yeah, can we, can we have those? And we'll, we'll tweak them a bit. So each gear lock is going to have one of these. So we're going to take a gear lock uh, and we're going to do it. Right, which gear lock are we going to take? Let's take, uh, I don't know which one this is, because I've got my dice, I've got two gear locks uh, in a thing. Jonathan is saying, if you can name your character, it's an RPG. Nah. <laughs> nah, not at all. But again, it depends on your definition of an RPG. I mean, you could say, any board game is an RPG. If you're playing the role of a hotel inspector, it's an RPG, but no, it's not. It's not an RPG. So yeah, each character has 16 dice uh, for their skills and then four dice for their attributes. So they, I believe, go in there. Um, these go in here and I probably should put them in the, in the right order. So each dice is numbered. Uh, so one, two, three, four. Should I put them like that? Yeah. If, you, if you've put yours together and you've done it different, let me know. Now, is that a six or is that a nine? Oh, it bugs me when they don't put the dot on it. I think the number is in the top left. Yeah, the number's in the top left. Therefore, that's a six. Okay, which means that's six, seven, eight, which means that's a nine. Ten, eleven, twelve. And in fact, I've got to put this all away tonight because because <laughs> I've got an unboxing video tomorrow morning. If it arrives, that's what I've just been getting messages about. Um, an RPG is also considered one where your character advances in terms of stats, experience, etc. Yeah, that's another thing where your character develops, which is true of so many games. Again, everybody's definition of an RPG is different. Maybe because I grew up playing D&D, uh, my, my definition of an RPG is where you actually role play a character and you make decisions based on what that character does for me but yeah right so what else goes in here um i need to find so which which gear which gear lock is this with the green dice i don't know i'm not an expert at this game and in fact there's a story behind this game in relation to what I'm, I'm kind of trying to change my lifestyle a bit at the moment, and this game is partly responsible for that. I will tell you a story once you tell me which gear lock this is. Is anybody going to tell me which gear lock this is? 
so many bits. Oh, I spy a dark green one. Right, dark green is Gilly. Right, so dark green is Gilly. So where, yeah, yeah this, there's a lot of bits here. I'm looking for Gilly's chips are in here. All right, we have some extra things. And then I'll tell you the story. Right, so this, I believe, is Gilly's chip. So that goes there, and I think you can put, I think you put health chips in here equal to the starting health. So starting health is four. Now, tell me if I'm wrong on this, but I think I take four chips, and I've got the premium health chips, uh, and they go there, and then that goes on top. Is that right? Have I done that correct? Too many bits, yeah. Shannon says patches. Is it patches? Oh, you're looking at the wrong set of dice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's Gilly. There you go. So, yeah, is that right that I've put those dice on there? And then I think that is that. But it doesn't quite fit. No. There's one too many. The extra space is for his pet chips. Okay. Uh, it's for the pet chips or promo chips. Okay, so they don't go there. The health chips do not go there because they don't fit. So it's just that one. Okay, so that's, that's there. That's that. Now, stickers. Are there stickers for that? I think there are. Or are there? Yeah, there must be. There must be stickers for that. Oh, these look like tyrant stickers. No health chips, right? Uh, there should be a ghillie sticker. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the stickers. Oh, we've got more stickers here. Right, more stickers. This is thirsty work. This I might have to open the window as well because it's getting a bit warm in here. Right, so we have a ghillie sticker. Uh, oh, these are. These are thick. Now, where's this going to go? I think it goes there. I think there's a space there. Did I get the trove chest with the replacement stickers and the original stickers or just the updated ones? I don't know. I don't know. Shannon, Shannon will know what I've got. I'm not sure. I did read somewhere. I, I think I've got the updated ones. Is that this? That the metal one, the plastic ones didn't stick and the metal ones did stick, or the metal ones didn't stick and the plastic ones did, or something like that. So, I'm going to take the ghillie sticker. All oh, right, nice. That goes on here. So, let's try and get it on straight. Okay, there we go. I got both stickers. Excellent. Use the thicker stickers only for flat surfaces. Yeah, so the thicker stickers are really nice and they've got a kind of metallic thing to them, but the metallic stickers on curved surfaces didn't stick. They just, they just came off. So there we go, that's, that's Gilly. Uh, and that is it. So the dice, chip in there. There was something about promo chips and pet chips, but we'll get to them later on. And that, presumably, so this is this. And this is just going to go in there. So these all need to come out. And this is how many characters. That's the thing. This game is one of those games where it's the characters that make it um, the game. Every character plays very, very differently. Okay, take them out. Put them there. So basically this, I believe. We'll just go there. I'm going to do that for all of the others. Um, yeah, just as well I like stickering. Yes, I do. So that, that goes there and all the others are going to go on there, which I might do later on. Um, but you've seen that for one of them. So I'm going to move on to the next bit, just in case people don't want to sit here for two hours watching me do all of them. But that's, that's how that works. So we'll get to these rest of them later on. 
Maybe I'll put some music on. Or watch somebody else's live stream. Right. So yeah, so the gear lock trays are going in that one. Right, number three is this one. Okay. Number three is mats in the back. And we have... I don't know what these are. Nope, I do not know what these are. But I've got two bags of them. They look like things for storing your chips. Chip separators. Oh, right, yes. Okay, so you separate the chips by that and then you put the label on there. Got it, right, I'll need them later. Hmm, chips. Quite hungry. Right, so mats. So all of the mats go in here. So again, if you don't know the game, every it's all about the neoprene mats. And every character has a mat like this. And remember those 16 dice that you saw earlier? Well, those dice go in these slots. Uh, and you basically, you, you advance your character by, uh, you, you level them up by basically buying more of these dice. Uh, and then the more you buy, the better skills you get. And you've got to buy them in a certain order and things like that. But that, that's where the 16 skill dice go. So this is the skill dice matrix. And the other dice go here with the numbers on. So these are the base stats for the characters. Uh, and then again, as you level up, you can increase, you basically turn the die to a different number and that will increase the amount of health, attack, dexterity, and defense you So all of the mats are going to go in there. So there's one mat for each character. And I think I have all of the characters now. I think. There are so many of them. Uh, so we have Gilly, we have Tink, we have Nugget, um, we have Gasket. Now, Gasket is a tyrant, I think, in the base game. I think Gasket is a tyrant, but it becomes a playable character in one of the expansions. Uh, Boomer. Uh, Patches. Tantrum. is very angry. Uh, pick it. And is that it? Oh no, we've got lab rats. So the lab rats are the ones that I tried to play last, which were very, very interesting and totally confused. I could not, could not work out at all. Are these going to, no, they're, they're going to go like that. Uh, I think that's all the characters, but then you've got all of the other mats. So the, the battle board. Uh, for the base game is here, um, which is because it's basically a series of tactical combats and you place the chips on here and this is where you... Uh, oh, Duster is the... Um, Duster is the, uh, the tyrant. Okay. So yeah, so that's one battle mat and then Undertow came with... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've missed some characters. Yeah, there's more characters. There's Dart. That feels thicker. Oh, because Dart is two-sided. Yeah, dart is really interesting. At some point, you actually flip the mat over. It's filled with dice. So, yeah, they flip over. Mark's here. Centre aisle. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I don't have everything yet. I've owned it for like three weeks. I think I might have everything. Well, I've got all the characters. I think the, the adventure map was out of stock. So, yeah, so here's the two battle maps. There's the one from the base game. And here's the one from Undertow, where you're basically on a raft uh, floating down the river. And you get these Krillin attacking you from the sides. Um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, then you've got this. This is, I uh, this is from um, Spice and Dice, where you can basically build your own tyrants with all kinds of fancy stuff. I've not even looked at that yet. I think is that Spice and Dice? Or maybe that's not Spice and Dice. What's this from? Somebody tell me what this is from. Um, because. I think this is Splice and Dice. This is where you build your bad guy. Yeah, that's Splice and Dice. Now, I don't feel experienced enough with the game yet to go with Splice and Dice. This is Age of Tyranny. Okay, Age of Tyranny is a campaign system. So, yeah. And then, finally, we've got the Lab Rats, which is these four. So there's all of the mats. Um, so I was going to tell you the story about this game. I can do that while we're going on with the next section, I think. I want to tell you the story while, while I'm on a boring and routine bit. So we have tuck boxes here. So tuck boxes, I've already got 
in other places. So these are already full of cards. Um, I've got a spare tuck box here, which is good because some of these are really full um, and I need to separate them. For now, where's the other tuck boxes? Yeah, so I've got more tuck boxes, more tuck boxes. And I hope there are labels for these because I currently have no idea what's in each one. Um, stays in the top right. Oh, right. Okay. Age of Tyranny. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping there are labels for these because, yeah, I, 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 unless there is some way of identifying what should be in what from the actual design of the thing, let me know about that. Let me know. Have I just, because this one's really full, you see, because I've, I've packed this one with all of these. Unfortunately, no labels. Right. Okay. So I'm going to have to somehow try and remember. <laughs> what's in what or make my own labels for them okay but that's where that's where all of those go oh i've got some more i've got some promo bits here book of secrets got two of them you can divide how to separate within each tuck box i should have space for uh eight of them right except this one's a this one's a double one this is a really thick tuck box but yeah i've got one two three four five the big one yeah there's room for two more but I think that's it. I think that's all of them. Yep, I think so. Oh, no, there's one more. Right. So we've already got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can use the card dividers between the boxes. Okay. Uh, no label, said Scott, but you should have card dividers. Yeah, I've got these. So is, that, is that what these are? That would be handy. Yeah, this is going to take me a lot more time. So loot, trove, loot. Right, okay. So we've got these. And then we've got some blank ones. Okay, so these are the different things. So I'll put, I'll put loot in one of them. Trove loot in another. Special encounters. And campaign. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these. So... Let me know what I'm missing here. Am I missing one of these? I'm not sure. So, okay, I can put loot there and then I can put the loot one there like that. I get that. But I've got nine of these and seven of these. So how, how do I put them together? Let me know. Uh, and Richie says, does this mean you'll be doing another too many bonus plays? So, okay, so I'll tell you the story now. I'll have a, I'll have a break from this and I'll tell you the story. Um, and this might come across as sounding very, very deep and meaningful, <laughs> which I don't, uh, I don't mean it to, but as some of you will know, I work way too much. Um, I work way too many hours and that's on me and it's all to do with my mental health issues and everything else. But basically when the last lot of too many bones arrived, so this is all Shannon's fault, right? When the last lot of too many bones arrived, cause I've had undertow for a while, um, and then I got the Too Many Bones, the latest box with a whole load of expansions and it arrived and I was going through a particularly uh, rough time with work. And every day I would go downstairs and I would literally open the Too Many Bones box and I'd just look at the components. And looking at the components made me happy, right? I'm very easily pleased. And I looked at the dice and I looked at all of this and I looked at all of this. And I know so many people who love this game and so many people who rave about this game and say how fantastic it is. And I haven't played it enough to get to that point. And I want to. Uh, I've touched it. I've, I've only just dipped my water into it. I like what I've seen, but it's a game that you need to put in the time and effort in order to get past those hurdles in order to then be able to enjoy it. And I was, I was going downstairs each night and I was looking at all of these components and as I say, it was making me happy because they looked really nice and I was feeling the chips and everything else. And then it suddenly occurred to me that I don't have as much time as I want to actually play the games that I want to play. Which, when you work full time in the games industry, might sound unusual. But trust me, when you're editing rule books at three o'clock in the morning, seven days a week, this, this is not what life's about. Okay, so I looked at Too Many Bones 
And I made a decision and I said, right, I've had enough of this. I'm going to try and make a change to my lifestyle. And I'm actually going to start taking some time off work and stop working myself to death, basically. Uh, and what that led to was January 2021, I am mostly taking off work. Okay, mostly. I am putting down my work tremendously and I am taking most of January 2020 on off work. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going on holiday. What it means for pretty much every day, Monday to Friday in January 2021, I am going to be producing free. In other words, I'm not going to get paid for it. I'm going to be producing videos of me playing games. And the reason why Too Many Bones is, is linked in with this is because this is the game which I have basically said to myself, I am taking most of January off for. I want to be playing this at least once a week, possibly twice a week, possibly twice a day, three or four times a week. I don't know. Um, and that's what I'm going to do. So, Richie, you said, does this mean there's going to be more content for this game coming to my channel? Yes. January 2021, you are going to see me playing this game, live streaming it on my channel, not sponsored by Chip Theory Games, purely funded through my Patreon. The Patreon support that I get is allowing me the basically the financial flexibility to take January off. And that's what I'm going to be doing. So short answer, yes, there's going to be more content. Long answer, that's why there's going to be more content for this game, because I need to take a step down from the work that I'm doing and start enjoying myself. Plus, this game deserves it. This game deserves I think the time and effort that I need to put into it in order to get that. And my plan is by mid-January, I, I, I expect to be at a stage mid-January where I am comfortable with the game and I can really start enjoying it. And that is when this will become one of my top games. That's, that's the plan. Anyway, right, let's crack on with things. Apologies for that if you didn't want a bit of a, <laughs> a heartfelt story. Um, tug boxes, what were we saying? What were we were saying about the tuck boxes, that we don't need the tuck boxes if I'm using the cars. Right, let's do that as an experiment. So this is, I think I need another drink now after that. Right, so we've got base game set general encounters. Thirty of them, I think there's thirty. And, and then 40 days of day law general encounters. So these are general encounters. Where do they, they fit in here? Here. Uh, yeah, day one to three encounters for too many bones. No, it's not those. Which ones is it? Too much work for too many bones. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, taking some time for myself. Yeah, that's the thing. Some people have said, well, Paul, actually, you need a holiday. You, need, you, you know, take some time off, actually have a break. Me not work, me doing things that I'm not getting paid for is taking a break. Um, and I'm going to love it. I'm going to sit here every day playing games, live streaming them, and it's going to be great. Uh, and I get enjoyment out of doing that. Campaign cards, which one is it? The only thing I've tucked into boxes is the loot. Right. Unless I'm missing a divider, I'm not sure, because these, these aren't special encounters. These are general encounters, and I don't know where these go. So, I'm just going to put them there for now. The thing is, if I do take these out of the tug boxes, what am I going to put in the tug boxes? Trove loot. Right, so this is trove loot, and I have a trove loot divider. The trove loot divider can go there, along with them. Boom, done. Oh, you had to write onto the blank cards. Yes. Yeah. It's just odd. It's odd that they've included them for everything else. For everything else. So this is loot. Loot can go there. That can go there. They forgot a general encounters divider. Use a blank one. Right. Okay. So I'm, I'm not, I've not lost it. They, they forgot one. Which is fine. We got the blank ones. Where's the blank ones gone? I've lost the blank ones. Oh, we've got a loot card. Um, anyway, I'm not going to do all of these. Oh, they're there. Right, so blank one's there. That's, I just need to write on it with a Sharpie, general encounters. Anyway, right, you've seen enough of that. I will take those cards out later. Um, but it does mean I have all of those tug boxes now spare. Right, so that's there. Oh, gosh. That's quite heavy now. Yeah. 
How heavy is this when it goes all together? That's the problem. I'm going to put it all together now and I won't be able to lift the thing. <laughs> okay, so bottom one. Number four. We have a blind draw, draw tray, two chip, chip tubes, and two chip trays. Oh, people in the chat. What, what's, what do you think about burn cycle? If you don't know what burn cycle is, burn cycle is going to be Chip Theory Games' next big game. It's coming out. It's going to be on Kickstarter in a couple of weeks' time. It looks very, very different um, from their other games. Um, I don't know that much about it yet, apart from what I've seen makes it look very different. Um, so, yeah, what do you think about burn cycle? Coming soon, in a couple of weeks' time, I believe, to Kickstarter. 10th of November. Yeah. I will be doing a video on it. Um, I can't say too much more about it at this stage, but so Jonathan is super stoked for Burn Cycle, but why? And Scott is intrigued by Burn Cycle, but why? Tell us, tell us what the game is about. Uh, Johan saying Insta back for me. Yeah, I mean, it's chip theory games. Too Many Bones, Cloud Spire, uh, Hopla Marcus I've never played, but I've heard very good things about. So based on the track record, it's, it's a must get. Anyway. In here we have an empty box. So first of all, it says blind draw tray. Oh, this would be fun. I have no idea. <laughs> this is the problem. I don't know this game well enough. Draw tray. So chip tubes. Is that these? It says a chip tube. These aren't chips and chip trays. Well, the chip trays are these. These are the chip trays. We have that. And we have that. Uh, it's like, it's like Chip Theory Games does Netrunner. Yeah, I, and, and Scott, you know what I think of Netrunner? <laughs> so for those people who don't know, um, I played original Netrunner when it came out. Uh, and I was actually the UK tournament coordinator for Network and Wizards of the Coast back in the late 90s. So I, I was the person who organised and ran the UK national championships for Netrunner um, back in the 90s. And then when, uh, when Netrunner got rebooted by Fantasy Flight Games, I was involved in the development of the early part of it. Uh, and I ran the first UK national championship of the U new Netrunner. So yeah. Anything to do with Netrunner, Cyberpunk, anything like that is right up my street. I absolutely love that setting of it. Um, and that, from the bits I've seen of Burn Cycle, uh, it looks like it as well. Shannon is saying uh, the blind tray is probably in the bottom right drawer. Right, okay. Yeah, I'm, gl I'm glad you said Netrunner because I got that impression as well when I saw it. Is that this? Is this the blind drawer tray? I think it is. So we've got Trove Loot, Encounters and Loot. But haven't we already put those cards in there? Watch out for your surprise, it might just pop out. Uh, the surprise has already popped out. <laughs> and it's got a bit bent, unfortunately. So we've got the blind draw tray, but I don't know what I'm doing with it. Do I literally just put it in there? It's when you're actually playing. Yeah. Okay, so that's that. The chip tubes, is that these? Is this the chip tubes? Because I'm not storing chips in them. Um, maybe it is. And I've got these bits. These are from, um, these are from Spice and Dice. So maybe I'll put these in here. Anyway, so the general impression I'm getting about Burn Cycle is, yes, people are excited about it. And yeah, it's co-op. Uh, Bonnie says you stored the cards in the drawer, not in the tuck boxes. That's what I was thinking. Can I not put the loot cards in there? Will they not fit? They probably won't fit, actually. No, they probably won't fit. Right, so I think that's that. Two chip trays. Two chip tubes. Okay, we'll put that back, see what happens. Next. Number five is up here. Uh, 
Okay, so we have, yeah, lots of plastic things here. Stickering time. Um, just out of interest, if Shannon is still in the chat, or if anybody else knows, what's these for? Is it ventilation? Just curious as to what the holes are for in the back. Um, yeah, cards in tuck boxes. Those are the chip tubes. Alternative storage option. Put those chip tubes in one of the right hand drawers, giving enough room for another chip tray in that drawer. Oh, right. Okay, we could. Could do that. Because I do have another chip tray somewhere. Yeah, airflow. Okay, cool. So air doesn't get trapped when you slide it in. Oh, of course. Yeah. Uh, physics. Right, so in fact, five and six are full of tyrant trays. Yeah, okay, so this is where the tyrants go. So again, if you don't know the game, and I, I don't know if there's anybody in the chat who actually, <laughs> who actually doesn't know the game, uh, you know, and it takes 1.5 seconds to the bottom to fall away. Yeah, so that doesn't happen. Yeah, and we had that earlier on with the box part. So yeah, for those who don't know the game, you choose a tyrant to fight against during the game, and every tyrant has special bits that are going to go in here, and this is what the stickers are for. Now. I have, however, already put, I think, yeah, I think these chips, so these are the characters, these are the tyrants, so I need to actually take these out. Yeah, so these are the characters, and these are tyrants, I think that's a tyrant, yeah, that's a tyrant. Oh no, oh no, and they're baddies. Yeah, we've got some one point baddies. Three there. These have got mixed up. Yeah, he's obviously fell on the floor at some point. So, where are the rest of the chips? Here are some more chips. Think these are the tyrants? No, these are the players. I think they're the players as well. Okay, so we've got lots of players. All the tyrant chips come out as well as the tyrant dice and the tyrant cards. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So more tyrants. Right. So we're going to put one tyrant away and we're going to pick this one. This is the tyrant we're going to pick for this guy. So we're going to pick this one. So I'm not sure why we've got two things, but let, yeah, you'll, you'll let me know if I'm doing this right. So I'm going to put that there. Now, how do I know what that tyrant is? Let's have a look at the stickers. So that tyrant is, I mean, look at this. This is how many tyrants there are. It's, in, it's insane. So yeah, talk about replayability. This looks like Marrow. And I have two stickers for Marrow. Oh yeah, so there's not quite this many. Because everyone is in here twice. Is that right? Yeah, I think everyone's in here twice. Where does the sticker go? Yes, it goes there. Is there any instructions telling me where the sticker goes? The font matches the colour of the chip. Oh, it does. Nice. Okay, so dark blue, dark blue text. Yep, yeah, nice. So where's this going to go? I think it goes on one of these ends like this. Looks at the chat to see if anybody's telling me I'm doing it wrong. Uh, Key Parker says, your chest did not come with the surprise. Are you sure? No lid. Don't do it. Okay, so don't put it on there. Okay. <laughs> That's the problem with a slight delay on the chat. So it goes on the lid. Does it go here? Yes, it must go there. There's, there's space for it. There we go. Thankfully, it comes off. It goes on the end of the lid. Right, got it. Uh, there? Or there? There. Oh, there's a space. <laughs> there we go. Does it fit? Eh, sort of fits. Yeah, I've not put that in straight. Thick fingers. Trying it out. <laughs> Good work, chat. How many people are shouting at me? I've got the low latency setting on. Um, I've tried ultra low latency, but it ends up buffering for most people. So I've I've gone with low latency does mean there is about eight 
eight seconds um, delay on the chart. So it's kind of going in, but it's not going in completely. So there's a bit of a curve. Maybe that's maybe that's deliberate, but it seems to be stuck. Okay. Well, this is good fun. I'm enjoying this. Thank you for joining me. As I say, this is never intended as a quick live stream. This was a yeah. If if you've got nothing else to do, join Paul, listen to him waffle on and struggle as he puts this together and thinks how he can't wait until January comes around. And I, I, at the moment, and again, I don't want to, this isn't to be sounding like a sob story. I'm working seven days a week at the moment, uh, sometimes until 11 at 12 o'clock at night. So I don't even have weekends at the moment to play, to play any real games. So yeah, this is, this is why I'm not getting time to play things at the moment, but that might change soon. Two sets of stickers in the box, the flat ones that are foiled, use the flat ones for the tyrant boxes uh, as the foil ones come loose. Right. Okay. Now, somebody did say this earlier on. And I thought... Okay, so I should be using these ones. Right, okay. I've used the foil ones for this. Uh, and yeah, the chat comes, comes loose. So... Peter says this is a bit like punching the games at Essen before flying home. I do exactly the same. You go to Essen, you buy a whole boatload of games, and in order to get the weight down, sit there in the hotel room, punch them all out, uh, stuff my socks into the games as well. Um, yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just stick her another one. Let's stick a NOM. Yeah, let's stick a NOM. So this is the non-metallic sticker sheet. Um, yeah, so they are thinner stickers, and these will these will probably stick on better. Oh yeah, that, that's that's be I think that's a bit thinner. So that's actually going on a lot easier. Yeah, so metallic sticker sheet to one side, and I'll use this sticker sheet instead. Okay, so yeah, these are the tyrants. You choose a tyrant at the start. Um, so yeah, next question for the chat. Who is your favourite tyrant? I, I, you know, I don't have one. I've only played the game three times, I think. So yeah, I don't really know. Right, let's look at what we need. So we're going to put Nom and Marrow away. And we need to get... We need to get the blue cards, which means going back into here. Oh, that is heavy. Right, where are the blue cards? Not in that one. That's Age of Tony campaign. Uh, doesn't have a favourite, but Goblin King is your teaching tyrant. Okay, and David says Goblin King or Queen. Okay, so tyrant encounters. That's the. Need all of the blue cards. Just the blue cards. Okay, keep them to one side for now, just in case. So we need nom. Tyrant encounters, tyrant encounters. Oh, it's down at the bottom, isn't it? Yeah, it's down at the bottom. So build a tyrant, build a tyrant. Okay, they're from Splice and Dice. Okay, Lobulus, Leech, Oxide, Lock Gear, Think, yeah, I think they are the ones from another set. So I'm going to need more. Brian says he likes Nobulus from Undertow. Here we go. Yeah, so I haven't actually sorted these out yet. I've kept them in the sets. Here we go. Here's Nom. Oh, still got the smell. Right, so there's Nom with Nom's one card and Nom's other one card. Oh, one from base set, one from 40 days. And then the epilogue of Nom, which is from Age of Tyranny. I guess I don't need that. There's Nom. Um, and then we also need... Here's Goblin King. What was the other one that I got out? Begins with an M. Marrow. Is it? We got Marrow, 
one of two, two of two, epilogue of Marrow. Okay, right. So I've got the blue cards. What am I doing with these cards? Ah, they go in the top. And we need to find Nom. Where is Nom? Oh, look at him. So cute. There he is. There is Nom. So Nom's going to go in there. What other chips go in here? What am I missing? And there's a dice as well, isn't there? Where is... Where is the dice? For the bad guys. Hmm. So that's two of the gear locks. That's two of the gear locks. Uh, one of the gear locks. That's two of the gear locks. Special effects. Ah. Initiative dice. I need the initiative dice for Gilly. What I didn't put in. Just do that and I'll go back to the chat. Yeah, so Gilly's initiative dice is the one that I forgot. Okay. Some tyrants only have one chip. Yep. Uh, for Builder Tyrant, you use the chip holes. For the builder tyrant stat skill dice. Okay, right. So I'm fine with what I've got for that one. Okay. Good. It just seems that there's a bit. Is that it? Is that it for Nom? Is it just that and the cards? And there's nothing else. No, there's 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 a dice, isn't there? I can't remember. Do you have dice for tyrants? I thought you did. I might be getting completely mixed up now. Missing the dice, yes. So where is his dice? And I assume they're colour coded as well, so I'm looking for a red dice. But I'm trying to I'm looking through all my dice. So that's that's another gear lock and the attack dice. They're lab rats. Yeah. And it's not these. I don't think it's these. Yeah, every tyrant has at least one die. I thought so. I'm just trying to find them. So these are the these are the gear lock dice and attack and defense dice. That's another gear lock. And I got four more trays here, which again are more gear lock dice. More gear locks. More gear locks and more gear locks. Last tray I put on top. This one. Okay. So is it this one? How do you know that that is the nom dice? There, tyrant dice. Okay, you can see it there. Right, could be that dice. Check the back of Nom's card. Yeah, got it. Right, thank you. So that is Nom's dice and Nom's card. And is that it? Is that it for Nom? There you go. So that's Nom. And that goes in there. And then if we do something similar, I'm not going to do all of these. I'm going to do something similar for Marrow. So we need Marrow's cards. Where have I put Marrow's cards? Marrow's cards are here. And we look at the back of Marrow's card and we're looking for that, which is this one, which is again blue. So I just looked at this and I thought, well, surely there's not enough there for all of the tyrants, but I've probably got some elsewhere. Um, but yeah, is that it? Is that all? My rule books show each tyrant and what goes with them. Ah, right. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, if that's right, chip, that, that, need to add the epilogue card for nom. I thought I did, didn't I? Uh, 
<laughs> the delay makes this frustratingly funny. It said need to add the epilogue card for nom. Oh yeah, where did I put it? I thought it was in there. Oh no, what did I do with it? Well spotted, chat. So much stuff with this game. There you go, epilogue nom, found it. Cool. There. That goes there, that goes there. That is nom done. You can go in there. Uh, and then this is uh, this is for marrow. Okay, I'm not going to do all of these tonight, but you can see how long this will take to put it all together. But I think once you get going, once you get past the hurdle of me not having the faintest idea what I'm doing, uh, then it's all going to be better. Right. So this draw here is again more of the same, and what's next? Down at the bottom, number seven is dice trays and then chip tray and chip tray. So the dice trays that are going to go here are all of the ones with dice in that we're not using. So all of the character dice can come out because they're going to go in the character. So it will be these ones. The ones with the attack, defense, that way. Um, yeah, the generic stuff. So yeah, attack, defense, and the, what are they called? Effect dice. The nasty things that you can do to other things. And probably the trove chest. The loot dice things. That's a part of the game I've not actually done yet, when you get trove loot and you have to roll to open it. I thought I had another one. I did have another one. It's there. Right. So we need to take out um, So some of these are going to be tyrant dice, aren't they? Probably these ones are going to be tyrant dice think based on the color and probably that one as well and possibly others who knows right, take these dice out in here okay right so uh oh i need to put these away. Nom family pack is nine ninety five currently, unless it's changed and available on November twenty seventh. Plus, all of the other promos are available on that day as well. Okay, there you go. Yeah, there's a whole boatload of promos, and I saw people recently getting a a baby promo, a baby gear lock, which looked looked cool. Four hours to arrange it all. I don't have four. I haven't done trove loop. No, I haven't. I've only played. Um, no, I've never played it solo. It's just I've never got to the point in a game where we've got trove loot. And you have to write roll dice to unlock it or something like that. Yeah. Haven't got to that part of the game yet. Poof. Right. Where are we up to? Gosh. So dice trays go in the back, chip trays go in the front. But what's going to go in these chip trays? That would be, aha, this stuff. So we've got some more health chips. These are totally going to fall out of my hand. Where's the bottom? There's one. Right. I've got a lid here. No base. Okay, so. Bit tight. Premium health chips. Right. So yeah, so the chips that are in the base game box, they're now going to go in here. This is a lot of health chips. Okay. 
so I've got I've got chips in here as well. So maybe I should put them in there. Right. So I have two lots, two lots of premium health chips. Is that right? One of them looks a slightly different colour to the other. I tell you what. Ah, these are the Cloud Spire health chips. Yeah, I think these are the Cloud Spire premium health chips. Yeah, there you go. People are saying Cloud Spire chips. Yes. Okay, so I'll take them out. <laughs> and I'll put them in there. Although this might be that if they fit. Yeah. I was going to say that that felt like a lot of health chips. I do prefer the Cloud Spire ones. I prefer the kind of uh, the matte finish. I like the fact that monkey's just poking out here in the corner. Here a monkey. Whew. Right. I thought an hour might be enough for this. Uh, no chance. Okay, so what, so these, is this where we're going to, if this is a long time, if we're going to start adding components from other games, yes. <laughs> oh, and here's my, uh, here's my X-Wing miniatures collection. We'll just ram these in. I don't have X-Wing miniatures collection. Right, so we're now going to use these. And we're going to try and work out what we do here with these stickers. Where are the stickers gone? Don't think I need that anymore. Uh, my migraine's coming back, but I'm going to push on. So here we go. Here's, here's the little stickers for the little things. These are a bit dark. A bit hard to see with my failing eyesight, but I think... And I don't know why we've got multiple ones. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven ones. And we seem to have two of everything else apart from fishy ones. Hmm. Might want to not stick at these yet. Why? <laughs> Thicker body chip dividers are awesome. Save so much time during gameplay. So. Hmm. Why don't I want to stick at these yet? One of the papers says the meaning of the stickers. Yes, ah, yes, you're right. That was the bit I put on the floor. Wasn't it? Or was it on the back of this? It was on the back of this. Right, here we go. So yeah, the one is the one point body chips. I just don't know why I've got seven of them. Yeah, and on these, there appears to be indentation i don't know if you can see that probably not yeah you can't really oh you can see it there just about there's, there's two two circles for them so these are the dividers you put a number and a type oh right there's seven different bodies with one points gotcha oh i see now yeah of course so we're going to go with some one point bodies and we're going to put the one points there Yep, there you go. So one point baddies of goblins. Yeah, so we're going to do one point goblins. So yeah, when you're playing against different tyrants, different tyrants will tell you to use uh, different types of baddies. So with these dividers, it does make setup time a lot, a lot easier. Uh, one dot for every, uh, for level, second dot for type. Yeah, cool. Right, so we're looking now for one point baddies that are goblins. So we need to go through all of my baddy chips and divide them up. So they are the three pointers. One point. Yeah, these have got completely messed up. 25. Another five. Some more tyrants got mixed in. Yeah, I think they fell on the floor at some point. Yep, more tyrants there. Uh, the grey ones are the... I can't remember. Remind me what the grey ones are. They're the ones, I think, from Undertow. One... Oh. 
five. Right, it's got to be more than that. Oh, yeah, they're all in here. Monkey's keeping them safe. Are these me ones? Yeah, these are me ones. Right, so they are all my ones. Well, at least they're all together. So I'm going through these and looking for Razor the Mix. That was it. You don't divide the 20 point baddies. Yeah, not enough of them to matter. Okay. So the goblins, you can see the type down in the bottom right. So yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sit here and divide these. So goblins, orcs, uh, scales. You can't see what I'm doing. I'm just talking. More scales, goblins, trolls, orcs. What are the mushroom ones? Bogs. Bogs, scales, uh, goblin. It's got a grey background. What's so special about this one? This one's got a grey background rather than a black background. So there's something special about this one. I don't know what. Okay, but it's still a goblin. Um, bog, bog. Expansions have different borders. Okay, right. Uh, what was red? That was a troll. Troll. Purple ones are beasts. Bogs. Yeah, I can see how these dividers are going to really speed up setup. Because having to go through these each time and find them. Uh, that's it. Only for the few times I've played it, but it did take quite a bit of time to set up. We have some more scales, more scales, more scales. Scales. Trolls. Oh, I want to play this game. Right. I think that's it. I think that is the one point baddies. Done. Is in this. Oh, no, we've got some more. Right. Okay. So, got a few more. Another goblin. Og. Beast. Beast. Uh, orc. Troll. Beast, bog, bog. Right, okay. So, one point, goblin buddies. Yeah, quick solo play of none before bed. <laughs> um, so, they go in there, and that's it. And that just keeps them together like that. And then they go in there like that. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's really good. Okay. So, next, we're going to do. One point cake. Definitely need some cake. Has anybody got any cake? Can you send me some cake? Um, it's been a four Jaffa cake day already, and I've eaten. Yeah, I've got the pack of Jaffa cakes that I have up here. They're all gone. Um, I think I've got an emergency supply downstairs. So I might need to break into those. So next, we're going to do scale. I told you I like stickering things. Okay, there we go. One point scales, which is these. So I've got quite a lot of these. Quite a few of the scales. So they're going to fit in there. Like that. Okay, and then what's going to fit in there? I think bog will just about fit. One point bog buddies. Green is spice and dice, blue is undertow, grey is 40 days and age of tyranny. Right, oh, 40 days or age of tyranny. Cool, thank you. Put this on the wrong way. Not paying attention. Come off without breaking. Come off, come off. Right, okay. And to multitask, doing too many things at once. That is going to go on there. So while we're here, and this isn't me trying to push anything, I am just going to mention it. Um, 
yeah, I mentioned obviously taking time off in, in January is funded through the Patreon. A lot of the content that I create on my channel is funded purely through the Patreon. I know a lot of people watching right now are Patreon supporters of mine, so thank you very much. It is your financial support that allows me, that's not going to fit, uh, that allows me to do what I'm doing in January and to do things like this. Because, you know, I, I, I could be sat downstairs um, watching telly and doing this, but I, I like producing content for my Patreon supporters. Their financial support for me is very, well, obviously it's important because it's financial support, but it's more... It's more for me the moral support. People supporting me financially, they're, they're effectively giving me a bit of their money in order for me to create content. It means that I want to create more content for them. So, yeah, if it weren't for the Patreon campaign, I wouldn't be doing something like this, for example. I'd be downstairs watching, watching TV and putting this together uh, with the cats, although the cats would probably be no help whatsoever. But yeah, the Patreon support that I've got, again, it, it gives me the motivation to to produce more videos like this. And there's no way I'd ever do a video like this commissioned. This, <laughs> I think this is one thing I like about my channel is that at one end of the scale, you've got, for example, recently I've just released my how to play videos for Rococo, which was sponsored. They were paid for by the publisher because they took 50 hours to make. Um, and they are professionally scripted, written, filmed, edited, you know, loads of digital animations and everything else. So that's at one end of the scale. And then at the other end of the scale on my channel, you've got me sitting here putting together a box and drinking cider. So yeah, I like to provide <laughs> a variety of content. Yeah, and sometimes I'll even like play a computer game or something like that. Anyway, they're going together. We know how that works. So I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do any more of those for now. Because yeah, we've seen, we've seen how that works. But is, is that, is that everything? Is it now just a case of going through everything and putting it all together? Because I've made a complete mess here and I need to tidy this up <laughs> before tomorrow morning. So I think I might just have to carry on. Um, yeah, I think I might just have to carry on. Okay, well, I mean, you don't have to stick around and watch. If you are, if you are disappearing, for, you know, you've kind of seen how it all goes together. But I'm now just going to sit here and carry on yeah, putting this together. If you want to stick around, that's absolutely fine. Jonathan's got to go. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Um, yeah, if you want to stick around and chat with me or anything like that, then, then let me know. Tell me about the best Too Many Bones experience you've had. Or whatever you want to chat to, about, chat to me about. If you watched any of my other live streams today, uh, let me know what you thought of them. Because I've did, what did I do? Unboxing of Arnak. Oh yeah, I played through the ages against Vlager and beat him. <laughs> That's what I did today. That's never going to happen again, is it? Never going to happen. I mean, to be fair, he should have won. He just got unlucky, but yeah. Yeah, beating Vlager at through the ages. That was like, yeah, I, I'm still sort of <laughs> in a bit of shock about that. Uh, I still maintain I'm not very good at the game, but maybe maybe I'm better than I thought. It was a it was a tough game. I was the, the best thing about that game, even though I was sure I was going to lose until near the end when it turns out he didn't have a war card, is that it was tense. I was and and I don't like games that stress me out. So games that cause stress and anxiety like hidden role games and hidden traitor games i can't play those games right they just cause they trigger a lot of my issues uh people lying bluffing cheat it's just but games that cause tension rather than stress the, that's the good stress and that game of through the ages today with larger was tense i mean i was i, I was nervous i was like I, I was i was fully aware that i was on the back foot it was probably all going to go wrong. Um, and even near the end of the game, it was like when he was 50 points ahead on military or 45 points ahead on military. I was like, right, this, this is it now. He'll declare war on me. There's nothing I can do. There'll be a 40 point swing and, and that's game over. But I'll just try and get close. As long as I get close to him, I'll be, I'll be happy. Um, and then he didn't get a war card. And then I won. 
and I'm like, wow, okay. <laughs> and it was just, yeah, I can't, as I say, I still can't quite believe it. Um, but yeah, that was cool. I mean, just playing through the ages against Vlaja, it was an honor. Um, and because it was live streamed, he wasn't able to obviously uh, go into details about what he was doing. Um, but I was thinking, um, I, I was trying to think about what he was thinking about. And I will have a chat with him afterwards, after the game and say, you know, talk to me about some of the decisions you made, why you made that decision, because it was really interesting. So best too many bones experience for Shannon. Gen Con 2018, before you worked for Chip Theory Games, you were one of their ambassadors. Yeah, a group of ambassadors got together in one of the ballrooms after a full day of demoing and played against Dustin. Had a lot of fun. And that's the, that's the great thing about, because I know people who do demo work at conventions um, and they go there and they demo the game and then they disappear off in an evening with their friends and they go out and have a drink and they have food and whatever. And then you've got the other end of the scale, crazy people like me and Shannon that spend all day demoing a game for a company and then in the evening go off and play that game ourselves. <laughs> but that shows passion. It shows that you've, you're excited by the game and that you love the game. And, you know, I, th I think it's a good thing. Um, certainly, you are where you are now. That, that obviously showed Chip Theory games that you were, you know, passionate about the game. And, you know, I, I wouldn't be where I am today if I was just, you know, a gamer who liked games. It's because of that passion. Um, and that passion leads to discussions with the publishers. That passion leads to helping out publishers, you know, Shannon becoming an ambassador, uh, me doing loads and loads and loads of work for CGE in the first few years, just because I was a fan of their games. And eventually, and it doesn't happen to everybody, don't think you can just suddenly jump into the board game industry and start working because you demoed for somebody. But if you show the passion and you show the interest, um and then if that company is ever recruiting they they will look at you and they'll think ah oh, yeah we quite like what paul did maybe we should get him to do more stuff for us and you never know you end up where where you are um yeah very long game but playing a game you love with people you love so much e exactly yeah one of those uh, and i was the same when i was demoing letter jam for cge for four days straight at gen con i'd then spend the evening playing letter jam <laughs> no, it was Essen last year. I went back to the apartment and I played Letter Jam with, um, with Jordan Draper. First time I'd met Jordan Draper. Um, we went out for a meal and then we came back and we played Letter Jam, which I'd spent <laughs> all day demoing. But yeah, really enjoyed it. Anyway, where are we? I've, I've only done six of them. I'm, I'm missing some one-point baddies. Which ones are we missing? Not sure. Okay, I'm going to go to the five-point baddies because I've got, I've got six types of five-point baddies. Uh, Anthray says, watched lots of gaming rules videos on Cloudspire. It's what got you into chip theory games first, and then you found out about Tomb Raider. Oh, thank you very much. Um, and yeah, Shannon says, 100% that is very close to how you ended up working for chip theory games. Yeah, it's, it's just how it is. That's how things work. So yeah, Cloudspire. Um, another game that if it weren't for lockdown I'd, I, and, and time, I, I would be playing more of. Um, so... Let, let's talk about game of the year. <laughs> so I do something a bit different. I do something a little bit unusual to everybody, all of the other content creators that release their best games of the year. Um, in December of this year, you will see lots of content creators releasing videos for their best game of this year. Okay, and that's what they do. They get to the end of the year and they release their best game of the year video. I don't do that. I release it a year afterwards. Um, so in December of this year, I should be releasing my top five games of 2019. Now, I do that for two reasons. Um, the first reason is I like to be different uh, and I like to do something a bit different from, from what is the norm. But also, many of the games that are coming out this year are only coming out now. Okay, at Essen Spiel. And that only gives you two months to play these games. 
And I, I don't believe that I, in that last two months of the year, could play enough of the games that come out enough times to be able to say to myself, you know what? That's in my top five games of the year. Okay? So by me waiting a year, what it means is at the, at the end of November this year, I will look at all of the games that I played in 2019. Oh, sorry, no. All of the games that were released in 2019 that I have played, because sometimes I don't play a game until a year after it's out, and then I'll give you an evaluation, okay? And it allows me the time to look back, because in December of 2019, I probably went, wow, this game's great. And in December of 2020, I'll be like, okay, well, it was great for the first three games, but then I played it another couple of times and I went off it, and now I have no interest in playing it again. And if I'd have done my top five at the end of the, that year, I would have now regretted it. But what I do is I, I do that. Uh, I can already tell you right now what my top game of 2019 was. Okay, I don't need another month um, to think about it again. Um, and spoilers, it's Cloudspire. Uh, I, I will go into more details in the video about why it is my game of the year. Um, and it might be a bit of a surprise to some um, that I didn't pick. Maracaibo, Cooper Island, Crystal Palace, you know, the, the medium to heavy stroke heavy Euro games that I'm, I'm known for. Um, but yeah, so there you go. Spoilers. You don't need to watch the video now. <laughs> No, that'll be coming out hopefully in December. As I say, that'll be my, my top five games of 2019, which I will... Because when I did it last year, it was funny because I put the video up. So December of 2019, I put the video up saying my top five games of 2018. And uh, everybody went, Paul, you've got the wrong title on your video. <laughs> I was like, no, I haven't. That re and they went, what, really? You, you're a year late. And I'm like, nope, I'm just doing it different. Um, I also don't like the whole cult of the new thing like you know these games are super popular now and then six months later nobody's talking about them um and, I, and i'm guilty of that too because you get you get so many games in it's it's so hard um to keep up but i again by, by waiting a year it allows me to look back reflect and say is this really a top game is this a game that i'm gonna want to keep coming back to uh, is this game that I have as much uh, respect for now as I, as I did then? So, yeah, that's what I'll do. Anyway, side topic, since Cloudspire was mentioned. Uh, Rocket Magna is new to board gaming, just like the look and gameplay mechanics of Too Many Bones, but everything that's available. Uh, Cloudspire is on your list for the same reason when it's back in stock. Yeah, I mean, what I was saying earlier on about um, stuff that Chip Theory Games produces. Um, if you like their stuff, it's kind of a no-brainer. Because I think what you're getting is you're getting a quality product that's interesting, that's unique, that's well-produced, that's cleverly thought out with a lot of depth and a lot of gameplay. But the games are very different. So if you like Stefan Feld games as a designer, and somebody said, should I buy Bonfire, which is the latest Stefan Feld game? I'd be like, yes, if you like Stefan Feld games, you should, you should get Bonfire and you should play it. But with Chip Theory games, whilst you're, you know what you're getting with regards to your quality and production and depth of gameplay and everything else, the games are so different, you, you, you don't know. Yeah, no brain if, if you can afford it. That, that is the thing. You are paying for a quality product. They are generally on the, um, you know, the expensive side because you know, of what you get in there. Um, but, you know, you might love Too Many Bones, you might hate Cloudspire. Or you might love Too Many Bones, you might love Cloudspire, and then you get Burn Cycle and you're like, oh, I don't like this, this is rubbish. Um, you know, they, they are very, very different games. So, anyway, what are we doing here? We've put together some chips. I'm a bit bored of this one now, so I'm just going to, I'm going to put these away, half done. Half a job, Grogan. There you go. So that goes in there. Is that going to go in there? I think that's going to go in there. Um, and I'll come back to... I'll come back to these baddies later. I'm going to do another character. Which character should I do? 
Don't know anything about burn cycle. Yeah, burn cycle is is coming to Kickstarter in a couple of weeks. Um, and it, yeah, it, it, it's very, very different. People were talking earlier on in the chat about it, saying it's a bit like Netrunner. It's a cooperative game. It's got cyber hacking and stuff like that. So Nugget, I'm doing Nugget next. Right, okay. Where is Nugget? Now, here's the thing. How do I know which one of these is Nugget? I don't know. So I'm going to have to get the... Nope. Oh yeah, I can do this one. Find Nugget. Nugget. Difficulty two. Solo two. Right, so this is Nugget. We're looking for that one. It is... That one. Yep, so we're looking for purple. So purple dice. Purple, scientifically proven to be the best colour. Just so happens to be uh, my favourite colour as well. Uh, love too many bones because it's co-op. I've played a ton of teenage ones. Yeah, so since we're here and we're having, we're having a heart to heart, <laughs> let's talk about co-op games. Uh, is it about ten years ago? Yes. So probably about 10 years ago, I was guilty of thinking and saying that cooperative games were not a thing and that they were, I didn't, I, I would never play a cooperative game. I don't really enjoy a cooperative game. Um, I didn't really see the point of cooperative games. And that's because I've always just played competitive games, medium to heavy Euro games competitive play that's what i did that's what i was used to and that was my that was my bread and butter and i didn't see the point in cooperative games in general there were a couple of exceptions like sherlock holmes consulting detective that's not really a game game but you know and now i absolutely love cooperative games i've completely i mean obviously your tastes evolve as you get older and you you know experience different things in life but now i love cooperative games absolutely love them um the whole idea of working together with somebody towards a shared goal and doing it oh it's just brilliant and i yeah cooperative games i i love cooperative games now so just going to check that message that just came through because that might be no do with my website Going on with my website yeah my website's got a problem at the moment um okay i'll get to that later <laughs> that's not urgent um yeah i've been having issues with my website recently so i've been trying to sort that out in the background while everything else has been going on uh, 15, in fact if this box doesn't arrive tomorrow i'm waiting for praga kaput regni to arrive um the new vladimir suhi game it's supposed to arrive today it hasn't arrived today uh because i'm supposed to be doing an unboxing of it tomorrow at 10 o'clock and it's like yeah it's not here yet <laughs> so it's going to be a bit difficult to do an unboxing of it when the game is not here right so that goes there that goes there that goes there do we have any other chips for nugget or is that it i think that might be it Okay. Okay. So let's get the sticker for Nugget, which is here. We go. Nugget. It's going to go on there. Is that? Everything or have I missed anything? Uh, Gilly, Tink, Duster and Lab Rats are the ones with the multiple chips. Yes. So Mark from Centre Island is saying cooperative games are still less than competitive for you. Uh, beating the game doesn't feel as satisfying as beating a player. Especially when co-ops generally choose your own difficulty. Well it depends how difficult you set it. Surely. 
Because if you set a game on like super hard difficulty and then you manage to beat it, for me that's that's still a good enough challenge. What I what I don't like in cooperative games, and you're always gonna get this, is where you win or lose based on luck rather than skill. I mean I know most games have a bit of skill, because if it's pure skill, then it's actually not a game, it's a puzzle, and you could work it out. And I get that argument, so you always need a little bit of ones. But I've played some cooperative games where the look factor is so high, it doesn't feel like your decisions matter that much, and you've won or lost more down to the look of the cards. And it's like, no, I, I, want, a, I want a cooperative game where the decisions I make are important. And, and that has more of a factor on winning um, rather than the randomness. Because then you feel the satisfaction afterwards. Right, we had a call to do stanza. So Shannon's in the chat, so we'll do stanza. Um, oh, Shannon, if you are still in the chat, there was a question I was going to ask you the other day. But you were live streaming at the time I was going to ask you the question. So I didn't. I didn't want to interrupt you because you were live streaming. And then I completely forgot to ask you afterwards. So in the last live video that Chip Theory Games did, um, the very, very start, there were three people on camera. And I think it was Adam was on the right. And I think Gilly was in the middle. Was it, was it Josh Carlson on the left? Yeah, because I'm obviously, I'm trying to know who's who. And you might not remember. But yeah, it was the opening, the opening section of the last video that was, that went live. And if Shannon isn't in the chat, if anybody else knows, let me know. That was the Josh that was Josh Carlson. Yeah, with the with the sort of um uh beard that's been shaved in a particular style. Right, okay. And the guy in the middle is the other Josh. The one who's gilly. Yeah, I thought so. I thought he was. Right, I can't find stanza. Why can't I find stanza? Gilly patches. Age of two and two. Daddy Tink, Gasket, Antrim, Ticket. Yeah. Because there's more in here. Um, yeah, I mean, we talked, we talked at some point about me doing an interview with, um, with Josh and Adam because obviously Chip Theory Games is now successful and there's a number of people uh, now working for Chip Theory Games, but I kind of want to, I just want to have a chat with them and it doesn't even have to be an interview. I can just have a chat with them next time we can actually meet up in person and say you know you you created a company from the start and it's now been really successful um you know what was the thought process behind all of that what were they doing before tip the game i just like to know the sort of history behind these things did i just get out stanza and did i put it back yes i did right okay so stanza is that one. I knew that. That's this one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Josh is a super cool guy just to chat with. Shaved in a particular style. Yeah. I'm. T I'm tired. I was just. <laughs> I didn't. You know. I wasn't trying to get around being. I was trying to somehow describe what it was, and I couldn't find a way of describing it. All right. So this is Stanza. Now, what's special about Stanza? Is Stanza the one I've tried to play? No don't think it is yeah no stanza is the one i've tried to play and did not understand this at all it's very very clever it's like a bard it's a musician it sings songs and then the songs get i could not work this this is this is definitely one where there needs to be a four page booklet on how this character actually works because the information's in here i just i just didn't understand it and i i, I tried <laughs> i really did right let's get another one of these Stanza is the one Jeremy played. No, when, when me and Jeremy... Was it? Oh yeah, I played Lab Rats and he played Stanza. I thought he'd played... Okay, I'll take your word for it. I thought we both played new characters. When we played. So. Where is Stanza's dice? Here. Okay, so 
that is stanzas initiative dice. There. Yeah, Jeremy played Dart. I thought so. Yeah, so I played Lab Rats and Jeremy played Dart. I think it was David that played Stanza. When me and David played, and David taught me how to play, I, yeah, David played Stanza, and I played, I played because we played Undertow. Yeah. Yeah, it's all coming back to me now. Uh, dice number 11 and 10. See, this is just pleasurable, just putting these dice. I might take all of these out and throw them all over the floor and then do this again. This is the kind of crazy person I am. You know, if you pour, uh, you know, a, a basket full of buttons on the floor in front of me, I'll just spend hours sorting them out. I like, I like organising things. You've probably worked that out already. Um, one of my, you know, personality traits. I like putting things away, putting things in order, putting them all nice and neat, all nice and tidy. I guess that's why I like sitting down and stickering things or sitting down and sorting out cards and leaving cards and any kind of therapeutic repetitive process is all good for me. God, people are finding out more about me on this video than, than they normally do. What happens when you have half a can of cider? Right, this is Danza. Yeah, there you go. I'm in a routine now. Boom. So here's the thing, Cheap Theory Games have made this trocha. There is now a limited amount of space for extra stuff for Too Many Bones. Does that mean that they're going to draw a line under it and say, it's now done? I think you can probably fit in a couple more characters, um, but after that, Maybe it's time to to move on. I don't know. Uh, he's had such a fantastic time sorting out the trove chest. Uh, one of the surprises warns you about lifting the full chest. Okay, everyone needs two chests. <laughs> yeah, and there has been talk about a similar chest for Cloudspire, which yeah, I I think would be good um, because then I can have you know this in one. Kalak unit, it's going to go in here. Um, so I'm, I'm in my studio at the moment. I have two four by ones in the studio. Uh, I have two five by fives in the games room. Um, the ones in my studio are my sort of treasured games, uh, or that's the plan. The ones that I really like and the ones that I want it to be near. <laughs> it sounds weird, it sounds creepy if I say it like that, but that, yeah, that's my plan. Um, and also, games, I'm probably going to save a couple of holes in the Kallax for games that I'm actively working on or about to work on. Because um, I did, I was just about to do a live stream um, a few weeks ago now. We're going to do Pick It next. Um, and just before the live stream, I was like, I can't find the game. Where is the game? So I think I've decided that games that I'm about to do videos for, I keep in here so that I know where they are. In fact, I didn't need to search for the character. I could have just looked here. Yeah, so I'm looking for that one. Is this one? So this is Picket. The Picket is blue. Yeah, we're getting through these dice trays now. That can go. That can go. What am I going to do with these? So I don't need these anymore. So what am I going to do with them? Because I don't want to throw them away because they're really good. But yeah, I... what are you going to do with them? What are you going to do with them? Right, I think this one is Mr. Pickett. Use them for dice for your other games. I don't have other games with that many dice in. <laughs> and they've got to be a certain size dice. One. There you go. So how do I know if a character has an extra chip or not? Is it just the colour? And I can't see 
Can't see another dark blue one. So I think. I think that is Picket. Yeah, what other games even have that many dice? <laughs> uh, that's Picket and Tantrum. Do Tantrum next. Or, yeah, Tantrum is grey. Uh, no, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do Lab Rats next. Do Lab Rats next because that's a multi-chip thing. So yeah, I played Lab Rats and I yeah my brain exploded all over the floor. I really struggled. That was uh, that wasn't a good stream that night. I was struggling to learn, and I don't feel comfortable when I I don't understand how my character works. But we also had major technical issues, and the stream was crashing you know like every half hour and it was like a three hour stream and it just kept crashing all night um yeah i had major problems with the software that night so yeah i mean jeremy's great it was great to have jeremy on the show and i think jeremy's coming on the show again on saturday yeah jeremy's on the show on saturday oh. and yeah the technical issues are mostly sorted out that's Vicky going to. I'm probably going to finish the stream soon. As I say, people have said it takes four hours to put this away, and I'm not exactly going quick because I didn't know what I was doing at the start. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, as I say, I've got an unboxing video to do tomorrow morning. If the game arrives, if it doesn't arrive. Have you seen this? Look at this. <laughs> Is it crazy? This is, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> Vicky showing her disapproving face. The cats will be coming in a minute, wondering what I'm doing. Um, okay, I think that's it. I think this one's different. So yeah, we have four. Which are the lab rats? Oh, how do I know which ones they are? Are they the four different colours? Oh, I'm not sure. You'll know which ones have extra chips when you have chips left. Yes. Um, <laughs> Lily's found a BGG list with lots and lots of dice. Cool. Okay. Um, I need the silvery dice too. These ones. All oh, right. So these go in here. I can't remember what the silvery dice were for. At all. But yeah. So they all go in there. But in terms of the actual... Ah, they're here. I can see pictures of them. So it's... Oh. That one? Yep, that's one of them. Uh, the purple one. Is that one of them? No, that's not one of them. Oh, it's the ones with the arrows on. Yes, the ones with the arrows on the other side, because you tag team them, that's it. So it's that one as well. Right, so it's those four. Uh, and there we go. That is Lab Rats. Done. Can I do one more? Yeah, because I'm going to have to finish this off. And I've still got... Seven to do. Uh, let's do Duster, because Duster is the other one from Undertow. Um, this is the easier one to play. So Undertow comes with Stanza and Duster. Uh, Duster is the easier one to play, and this is the one that I played when me and David played. David played Stanza, I played Duster. Uh, and Duster's quite cool, because Duster has Nightshade. Pet. And the pink dot. No, I've got... Seems to have two lots of pink dice. It's this one. Are they red? They're more red. Okay, so. Um, have just as initiative dice. Or uh, right, okay. Let's pop these in. Yeah, I, I quite like this one. I like the way that Duster played. Um, yeah, I think one of the 
One of the downsides of undertow is obviously too many bones, big box, quite expensive. Um, undertow, smaller game, only two characters, therefore cheaper. So there's one train of thought that says if you're interested in too many bones as a system, start with undertow because it's cheaper uh, and it will get you into the game. And if you like it, then you can buy the bigger box. However, I believe that starting with undertow is a lot harder than starting with the base game. And I, I know I really struggled with it. Um, there's, a, there's, there's extra stuff in undertow. There's extra rules and there's extra complication that aren't there in the base game. And certainly one of the characters, as I say, Stanza, yeah, blew, blew my brain. I couldn't work out how it played at all. So I actually think if you're watching this video, um, if you are able to afford the base set of Too Many Bones, even though it's more expensive, I would get that. Um, I, I would get that first. Because the characters in there, I think, are easier to play. The tyrants are easier to play against. And it doesn't have the extra. That's my opinion. People in the chat seem to agree, which is good. Yeah, Undertow has the Krellin and the Mech Baddies, the weird layout of the battle map. Yeah, it, yeah, and Diagon, yeah, exactly. That's it. It has all of that, that extra stuff. Um, yeah, maybe they should do, maybe they should do a Too Many Bones starter set. Yeah, there's an idea. Too Many Bones starter set. Call it Too Many Bones, Jaws of the Lion. <laughs> In fact, there's what. There's an idea. Because I've been talking about making games more accessible and making games easier to learn. Maybe there should be some kind of tutorial system for Too Many Bones that says, right, here's a set of tutorial scenarios. Here's tutorial number one. This is going to teach you how this bit works and it will step by step teach you how to do it. I'm thinking like a bit like Jaws of the Lion, maybe a bit like the Mage Knight walkthrough that literally takes you step by step and explains what's going on. And then tutorial two introduces the next bit. I think that rather than saying, boom, here's all the rules, off you go. Um, yeah, I think that might be useful. You know, and if, if I had time, I'd be absolutely working on that. I'd be thinking, because this is what I like to do. I like to try and make games more accessible so the people struggling to learn how to play um can actually get get the enjoyment out of them that i think the games deserve there's nothing worse for me than having a really really great game um and i'm not specifically talking about too many bones here although as i say my experience at learning it was was difficult um i'm talking about other games in general where the game is great but the impenetrable rule book means that people are just not, just not playing it People, you know, um, people can't play it because, or they get it and they play it wrong because they can't, they can't work out how to play the game. And you've got some really great games out there that people are not playing because they can't work out how to play them. Um, and it used to be a thing from years ago, uh, and it, but it is still there now. You still get it now. Games are still coming out um, with, with terrible rule books. And there's a really good game in there. It's just, yeah. So this is gasket i think i think this is gasket anyway i'm waffling now uh too many bones rule book is weird kind of the back half is like <clears throat> grab a five point buddy and go through a walk through combat yeah um i say i've not really looked at version 2.1 my first experience with the game was learning how to play from undertow which i know some people have said isn't a problem uh, and scott said earlier on in the chat that he learned how to play from undertow whereas me I tried three times to play the game learning from the Undertow rulebook. Every time I ended up putting the game away after a couple of hours because I just could not. I mean, even, even the third time when I thought, right, I've got it now. And I tried playing it and then I drew a card or I had an ability and I'm like, I, I do not understand how this works. So, you know, and that's the difference between the core rules and then... You know, you can, you can understand how Too Many Bones works. You can understand the core mechanism. But then when cards come out and you're like, I don't know what this means. Or you've got a character and you're like, I don't know how this dice works. Um, and th this is going back to what I... If you missed the discussion earlier on about my plans for January, this is why I want to do what I'm going to do in January. Is I am going to basically 
play this game until I get it. Play this game until I feel comfortable with the game um, and that I know what I'm doing. And I was ex I'm exactly the same with other games. If you take any game by Vita Lacerda, for example. Um, now, I have the advantage that I, I do work with Vittel. I help to do some development on his games. Um, and I end up writing the rule books for his games, which isn't an easy feat, and do videos for him and do all of that. But any Vittel Lacerda game or any game of that complexity, my first game is a total throwaway. It's just me completely baffled. And then my second game, I start to put the pieces together. And then the third game is when I start going, right, okay, now I, now, now I get it. And by the end of my third game, I start enjoying it. And now I can play Lisboa, I can play Vinyos, I can play Kanban, I can play On Mars, and I can enjoy them. But my first, first two games are a write-off, uh, and my third game is, is getting there. Uh, and then from then on, I, I can enjoy it. The difference between that and my experience with learning Too Many Bones is by game three of Undertow, I still didn't get it and I was still completely confused because I couldn't... It wasn't the fact that the game was overly complex, it's the fact that I couldn't understand what I was supposed to be doing. Um, and that's, that's where I ran into problems. Anyway, I think this is... I think this is Tantrum. Hopefully it's Tantrum. Grey Dice. Tantrum? Yeah. Grey dice. Grey dice. Oh, I tell you what, I forgot to put the brown dice in gasket. There we go. We're getting there. I think I forgot to put the blue dice in nugget, but already I can see this is making this whole thing a lot. So nugget's blue, but it's actually purple. Hmm. Yeah, the sticker for Nugget is not as purple as it should be. Uh, Anthrace says, you're blessed with the ability to recall and remember rules very specifically with the sacrifice of kicking out some other... Yeah, I'm, I'm exactly the same, right? I could teach you probably right now how to play on Mars. I remember pretty much most of the rules of that, and I don't need to know the rules of that, but they are in my brain. I can't even remember what I had for breakfast yesterday, but I can teach you how to play on Mars. I, I think I'm quite lucky as well in that I retain um knowledge of rules of games which is handy in my job since you know i do a lot of demos of games and teach people how to play games and through the ages i mean i've been playing through the ages for 14 years so i i have the advantage of through the ages i could teach you that pretty much with my eyes closed um whereas Mark, who is in the chat as the center aisle, you are the same with Cloudspire. And I, I'm not there with Cloudspire because I don't play it enough. Um, you know, three quarters of Cloudspire, I can probably remember. Whereas all of the edge cases, I'm, I, I struggle. Um, yeah, if you ever want anybody to teach you how to play Cloudspire, and I mean, teach you how to play Cloudspire, like how to play it well, yeah. Give Mark a shout. I'm sure he won't mind me pimping out his time. Because <laughs> again, the, the one game I played against Mark was, was, was it wasn't eye-opening because I knew exactly what I was letting myself in for. And I, this, this, was, this is when I'd been playing Cloud Spire regularly and I'd played it about four or five times and I knew the rules 100%. I was comfortable with the rules. I had no problems with the rules whatsoever, but I just didn't know how to play the game well, played against Mark, and oh my god, did I see how the game was supposed to be played. And he was like, well, I'm just going to do that, and I'm going to do that, and then if I do this, and you've bought that, so I'm going to do this, and I'm like, and I was obliterated by like halfway through round two. <laughs> it was insane. Um, but again, that's, that's what happens with a game like that, when somebody's very good at, at, at that game. So yeah, thank you for that, Mark, because that, that, it showed me how the game was supposed to be played and how great that game would be with two expert players who really knew the game. Whereas me, I'm just playing with people who know the game as, as well as I do. So the games are still great, but yeah. It's like playing chess against the Grandmaster. 
Or you could say playing through the ages against Vlada. But I did that and I beat him. <laughs> Scott, you're saying the only rule books you struggle with are Phil Eklund. Yeah, Phil Eklund's rule books, not a fan. Not a fan. I have, I have gone on record with my personal opinion on Phil Eklund rule books and I think it is uh, shocking that rule books like that are still being produced without any regard for the people giving money and buying their game. I, I think it's I think it's wrong. I have a I have a I have an issue, should we say, with somebody who continues to put out terrible, terrible rule books that are just so impenetrable and so obscure. Um, but I also have issues with his games. And the two things are separate. I'm not I'm not letting my personal feelings about his games you know affect my my opinion on his rule books if his rule books were really good rule books and i didn't like the games i'd say his rule books are really good um but most of the games i've played of his have been awful um and the fact that the rule books are terrible as well it's just one of those things so yeah i'm not a fan it's quite good in a way because if i was a fan of the games but the rule books were terrible it means that I would be spending all of my time on BGG and reading all of, you know, I, I'd literally spend days of my life learning how to play one of these games. And nobody should have to do that. If you've paid money and you've bought a game, it is the publisher's responsibility to make sure that the rule book is clear that you are able to play their game and not have to spend days and days watching videos and reading FAQ. That, that's my, my professional opinion and a personal opinion as a gamer. I just, yeah. What's the point? We've got better things to do. Play another game instead. Rant over. <laughs> it's late. I'm tired. I'm going to finish the characters and then I'm going to go to bed. I'm so close to finishing the characters. So this is Tink. Which is the right name. He looks like a mechanic. Uh, Mark is the first leading Cloud Spire edge case case finder. Yes. Uh, what games am I talking about now? I'm talking about, uh, I've, I've just had a bit of a rant about Phil Eklund's games. <laughs> he won't be watching. It's fine. Uh, I'll tell you what I do, and I'm not going to rant. This is not a rant. I respect Phil Eklund's games. I respect the fact that he has taken a time in human history uh, and he has researched it and he's created a game about it which is realistic uh, and possibly educational and simulates something in life and it is clear that he's done a lot of research for his games uh, so I, I respect that I just I just don't like the games Right, how many more to go? It looks like one seems to have two stickers. So it's two. Two more to go and then bed. Oh, look at that. This looks so nice. Right, where's the other characters? Right, so I've got two characters to go, which is these two. I have another two. Okay, so that tells me that they're going to release another two characters for too many bones and then that's it. Uh, the High Frontier 2nd Edition rulebook melted your brain. Yeah. I don't know if the later ones are any better. I did like, uh, and I say like, in a, in a funny way, um, was it the 3rd edition of High Frontier that spelt his name wrong on the box? Uh, and then there was some kind of legal trouble over it or whatever? I don't know. Yeah. It, it's, not, it's not good when games get into legal wranglings. But yeah, there was a version of High Frontier where they spelt his name wrong on the box, which is just like... Come on. <laughs> yes, this is a video watching Paul put dice into a tray. Boom, boom, done. Next one down. 
That is, oh, I said boom, and it's boomer. There you go. One more to do. This is where people in the chat say, oh, you got it wrong. You put the wrong thing in the wrong place. Right, there we go. Look at this. Yeah. Right, so dark. And that is that sticker sheet dead. If they do release two more characters, they will have to do new sticker sheet. John is still here. It's been so engaging. You've stayed despite your intention to say hi and duck out. Well, thank you very much for, for sticking around. We've been, we've been saying very, very complimentary things about Chip Theory Games, <laughs> I think. Um, right, so I guess that's, yeah, so Dart with the ball. So this, this is the weird character that where you flip over the board at a certain point in the game. It's like, you know, this is why I want to speak to Adam and Josh, because there's a there's crazy genius designer stuff going on in their mind for them to be able to think of this sort of stuff. And that's why I know I'm never going to be uh, a games designer, and I, and I, I don't mind that in, at all, um, because I don't have that weird creativity to do stuff. Um, saying that, I have guest designed a scenario for Frosthaven, which I think I was quite, quite creative. If you're going to get, if you're getting Frosthaven, one of the scenarios has been uh, designed by me and you might, you might hate it because it does something weird and interesting that's never been done before, uh, which I'm not going to say now, um, but yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of people aren't going to like it, but I wanted to do something different. Um, so I did. Isaac still hasn't approved it yet. I hope he approves it because a bit late not to. Oh, he's lined up with colours. Nice. There you go. Right. Is that that? That. Well, that is Dart. That is all of the characters done. Oh. So what I might do is I might actually put Dart down the side because it says you're supposed to put one down the side. Uh, so that I don't have to pull the thing out all the way. So yeah, two spare. Uh, character, tra character trays. Okay, that must go in there. There, it just fits. Okay, so that is it for tonight. I've got a complete mess here on the table. Uh, yeah, you can't see all of this. There's more mess here, okay? <laughs> um, but I'm going to go to bed now because I'm very, very... This, this, this was fun. Um, I enjoyed this. What have we been? Two hours. Um, yeah, me just putting it away. I think I could probably do this in about another hour. I think another hour and I could probably have this done. In fact, I might go to bed with the sticker sheet and these. Sticker these in bed before I fall asleep. Um, that's what I might do. But anyway, yeah, thank you very much for everybody for, for joining me. Um, I wasn't sure how many people were going to tune in uh, tonight. But yeah, this has been, as I say, I was going to do this anyway. So I thought, why not live stream it? People might want to tune in and watch. Um, and people have. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, as I say, if you like the content that I make, many of you watching are patron supporters. Thank you very much for that. Um, but yeah, if you're not a patron supporter and you want to support the channel uh, and help keep it going and stuff like that and help me have more time off to play games, <laughs> uh, then yeah, patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Right. Thank you very much again to Chip Theory Games for the Trove Chest. I will be finishing this tomorrow morning. And that's everything. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow for day two of Essen Spiel with some more live streams. See you later. proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit Game Toppers LLC